Hey guys, welcome back. It's your favorite Gimp with a Limp, and I'm here with a game that I've been trying to get to you guys uh, for a little while now. I don't know if any of you guys have ever had one of those one of those instances where you've had a game that isn't necessarily that difficult, isn't necessarily that hard, but you just haven't been able to get it in your head, haven't been able to grasp it. And for me, this is it. This is, of course, as you can tell here, uh, Tank Duel, Enemy in the Crosshairs by GMT Games. It's uh, designed by Mike, uh, I'm going to butcher that, Berticelli, and it is graphics by Terry Leeds. Like I said, I've had this one on the table for a little while trying to get my head around it because I was so excited to get it in because it sounds like something that would be really up my alley. Tank Battles, but this is very, very abstracted tank, uh, tank battles. You do not have any map in this. It is all pretty much in your mind because you were dealing with nothing but the tablets here that you have for each one of your different tanks that can be involved. Now I've got a little demo game here set up that we're going to go over here in just a little bit. We're going to play through some cards and let you guys see uh, how this game plays and how it all works out. And I am going to go with the Robata, which is the, the solo component, which I have not been able to find pretty much anybody using that. So we're going to see how well this goes. But before we do, let's show off some of the other tanks, of course, that are in the game. We have the Panzer V, I believe this is. What is this? I don't think they had Panzer Vs, did they? I don't know. I already know twos and threes and fours, but I thought I went to other stuff. But it says five, so yeah. Oh, well, Panther. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Dirt. All right, I'm showing my, my dumb self. Uh, Panzer three here on the back. And then we have another Panzer three and another Panther. So there's more than one of some of these. And this, I got to say, good components. You can tell that they really went out and above for this. But GMT is pretty well known for that, so I mean it's not all that surprising when it comes to them doing good components. Uh, Ferdinand, awesome, gotta love seeing the Ferdinand in here. What is on the back of the Ferdinand? We have another Panther. Oh, come on, that would be so awesome to have multiple Panthers against maybe some KV-1s or something like that. Another Ferdinand, which means we have another Panther on the other side. Uh, Tigers, of course, to be expected. And then the Panzer IV on the back of that. And we have a Stug. So yes, there are tank destroyers in this game. Uh, another Panzer IV on the back of the Stug. Another Stug, so it should be another Panzer IV. We got some of the Soviets that we're running into now. Uh, IS-2, some of the big boys. And then T-34-85. That was always one of my favorites, T-34s. Uh, another IS-2, should be another... Yeah, T-3485 on the back of that one. SU-100, so their own uh, tank destroyer. And then we have another T-3485. Uh, SU-100, so it should be another T-34. Yep, another T-34 on the back of that. Uh, T-34, the 76 version here, which is actually what we're going to have fighting here. Another T-34 on the back. So a lot of T-34s in this. Uh, T-34, T-34, and the other side's T-34. And KV-85, so one other, we do have KV-85. So just a huge selection of different World War II tanks involved in this. Obviously, as you can see, like I said earlier, very, very good components. You can see that it's very thick cardboard that these things are made out of. So I am very happy they did this. And this game is just made for expansions because you can just release tank packs. You know, uh, release Japanese tank packs, American tank packs, uh, British tank packs, whoever you want to release tanks for. So I'm absolutely positive they are going to do that. I'm debating, like, would it be better for them to release Tank Duel, the second version that has different tanks involved? Or would I like to see individual tank packs that could be purchased a lot cheaper, maybe a handful of tanks in it instead of having to buy a whole new game system? Uh, I could see it going either way, but if they were to go with another game release instead of just extra tanks for this game, then I would like to see some more mechanics added to the game. Something besides just new tanks, just American tanks added to it, or more German tanks that haven't already been included. Uh, something besides just the tanks themselves would have to be included for it to be kind of worthwhile. Maybe uh, some type of abstracted air attacks that could come involved, or artillery, or, you know, 
just something to change it up a little bit if they went that route instead of just individual tanks that you could purchase later on. Now, you guys heard me at the beginning of this talking about how this game has been on my table for a little while as I've been trying to get my head around it, as I've been trying to get my teeth into it to understand this game. And that's because it reminds me very much of another GMT game. And that, of course, is Fields of Fire, because Fields of Fire is like this in the fact that it's very abstract in the way that the game is handled and played. Plus, this one, Tank Duel, is ran off a deck of cards. There's no dice in this game, just like there's no dice in the Fields of Fire. Plus, the fact that, well, actually, let me just grab one of the cards and show you guys. Uh, you can see on the card, there's just so much information on this card. This isn't just a move card. This has uh, uh, orders. I can never remember what the I stands for. Orders of instruction or whatever it is. It's move. It's battle number. Any possibilities that could occur down here between smoke and explosions and fire. And all this other crap. Uh, cover. Minuses to hit. Whether or not you're spotted. This has to do with infantry being involved. Uh, down here, we've got a target number that's used for multitudes of different things. Then penetration modifiers. And this, depending on its color, determines whether or not it's heavy or light damage. It's mind-numbing, the amount of stuff that is on a single card that you need to understand what you're looking at. And it's ingenuitive, it's creative, but it really does kind of just stick to you and you you have to choke it down to understand what the hell's all going on now this game was rated as a four on complexity and it could just be me having a problem with it i mean my memory is not the best you guys know this so i do try to give games a little bit of slack when it comes to having to remember things because i know i i personally am not good at that do the whole head injury thing but there is a lot of if not this, then that. And if this, then that. And this leads to that when it comes to this game. And that especially comes into play when we start talking about Solitaire and the way that the Solitaire game plays. Because Solitaire doesn't play anything like two-fisting it would. All right. So I really would recommend taking and playing this game if you're first learning it without the Solitaire. And just two-hand it. Control both uh, sides. Doesn't matter how many tanks you're using, but definitely control both, uh, both sides and try it out that way just to kind of get your head around the game before you start trying to incorporate the solitaire mechanic because you need to have a good grasp of the basics before you start throwing in the advanced stuff. Uh, leave out the infantry. Uh, infantry in this are optional rules. We're not even going to cover it in this video. Uh, leave that out while you're learning the game. Absolutely. All right, so since I was going over some of the components, let's zoom in here and take a look at one of our tank boards so we understand the basics of what we're looking at here. And then we'll kind of get into the general concepts of the game. Depending on how long it takes me to go over the basics, we'll probably do the usual overview and then start the playthrough on the second part of the video. Start up here at the top left, of course, we got the name, Panzer IV. This is the one that I'm going to be controlling in our playthrough. You see, we got a T-34 over here, so good you know, comparable tanks uh, to go after each other. The T-34 is a little bit more armored and the Panzer IV has a little bit better gun. So they kind of offset each other just a little bit. Right below that, of course, you got the symbols denoting what side it is, German. And then you see this little negative five here. This is a size modifier when it comes to whatever tank it is. I think the Ferdinand, when we were showing it, had plus 15. Basically what it means is the smaller the tank, the harder it is to hit. So this tank actually deducts points against an opponent firing at it because it's a little bit smaller. And that's because, I mean, compared to the other tanks, yes, this is a big tank, a Panzer IV, T-34, they're relatively large, but compared to the other tanks in this game, they're nowhere near as big. Now, this track here on the left, this covers a whole lot of different things. You will keep track of your points over here. You will keep track of your move level your fire level, and basically the way to think about that is whatever your move and fire levels are, are how well your tank does that. Generally speaking in this game, the higher the number, the better, because you're trying to get equal to or under to succeed. Generally speaking, there are things that are reversed in the game. So your move level being a six here, 
If you were playing a move card, it would have to be a move six or under. So a move five, four, three, two, one to play it to operate this tank for a move action. If it was a move seven, eight, or nine card, the Panzer IV wouldn't be able to use it because it's not as good at movement. We see over here on our T-34, it's move and fire at both seven. So like I was saying, a little bit more mobile over here. doesn't fire quite as well as our uh, Panzer IV does. Same thing when it comes to the fire level, just like I was saying with the, uh, the move, you have to take and uh, equal it or be under it to succeed at the action to play the card. See, like I was saying, move four, both of these tanks could play a move four card since obviously their, their skill at is equal to or under. Now, you'll have things like your tracks get damaged or your driver gets killed. Things like that will happen and that will reduce your move level down and obviously you'll get to play less cards when it comes to that action. So it's, like I said, abstracted, but it's intuitive and it works and it's easy to understand once you start actually playing the game. Down over here, we've got our initiative box and it also tells us our victory points. And this is the victory points that the opponent will get. And in this game, your victory points actually come from your crew for the most part. Yes, you'll get points for killing the vehicle, but we see here a vehicle, the Panzer IV is only worth four points. But if you kill the commander, that's five points. And then if you wipe out everyone in the crew and the vehicle, you get a whole bunch of points. So when you play the game, as you take out each other's crew and vehicles, you'll keep tally of that with your little victory point markers. And they've got ones and tan, uh, ten, ah, my Southern's coming through, and tens that you can keep track of here on your little chart. This little box here, or actually let me finish with the initiative. Each side will determine initiative. It's handled differently when it comes to the Robota, but in a heads up game, each player will select a card and determined based on the battle number, which for this card is a 58. They go zero, I think it's one to 100 or zero to 100, but the lower the number is, that person gets to go first. So if you wanna go first, you wanna play a lower card. If you wanna go second, you wanna play a higher card. And then if you wanna toss things up, you play a middle card. That's how that's gonna work. And before each round, each player will pick an initiative card secretly. They'll pl uh, place it in their initiative box. Everybody reveals at the same time and then the player with the lowest number goes first and then it circles on around according to your initiative number on the card. Like I said, the Robota, the AI is handled much differently when it comes to determining its initiative card, but that's too hard to explain. Just if I start trying to walk you through it by voice, you guys won't get what the hell I'm talking about. I'll just have to show you. So right here in the center where it says field, this is your movement and terrain box. So think of this as the place that you're going to put cards to determine whether or not your tank is moving or if it's any special type of terrain. So if it's got mud and it's been bogged down, or if it's hiding behind some buildings, or if it's on top of a hill, this is where you're gonna place those cards to denote that type of action taking place. And the interesting part of the game is that you can play terrain cards on your opponent. So there are cards in this game like mines or bogs and mud, things like that that are not good for you, that you would actually play on your opponent when they're taking a move action and they're moving their tank and you would play that as a, a, a field action, I think, and it will bog down your opponent. You'll get to see how that plays when we start going back and forth, but it's an actually interesting thing to be able to affect your opponent. Basically like, oh, you drove into some mud, dummy. Like <laughs> reverse Uno or draw four or whatever the hell it is, you know what I mean? Up here at the top, there are some special ammos that you can get, uh, like APCR, that type stuff can be involved in the game. We're not gonna use it in our little playthrough here just to keep things simplistic and dumbed down, but yes, you can have special ammo that you fire off. Uh, hull down, you would put a little counter there to signify that your tank is hull down, so you can only be hit in your turret if you're hull down. The opponent does have ways to play cards though to kind of get around that and stuff. Here at the top, this is the range track. And this is 
really a large part of where it becomes abstracted. So if you look, both players have a range track. They go up to a thousand. And when you look at your range over here where it's showing your weapon, like your 75 mil here on the Panzer IV, it goes up to 2,000 meters because that's the farthest each tank can be from each other in this game. So the way to think about this is that zero is the center of the battlefield and a thousand is on your side, all right? As far close to your side as possible. Your little range marker here, as you play move actions and move your tank, you're effectively moving closer to the center of the battlefield and closer to your opponent. And I know what you're thinking. Okay, well, what happens if you get to the center of the battlefield and you want to go to your opponent's side and bum rush them? Well, to signify that, you flip over your range counter, and now, if it's red, it means that you're on your opponent's side, and you can continue moving on closer and closer to their side of the battle, if you will. So just as an example, real quick, looking at both of our tanks here, they're both set at 800 meters. So since each one of them are on their side at 800 meters, that means these two tanks are 1,600 meters apart. They're each 800 from the center and 800 from, well, 800 from the center. You add those together, 1,600 meters. Really easy way to grasp it. It took me a sec when I first started off. I was like, wait, wait, what? You know, what are you talking about? How does this work? And... I get it now, all right? It's not a hard concept to grasp once you've played a couple of rounds of it to understand it's all abstracted, right? Since there is no map, you can't tell lines of sight or anything like that. And I know you're thinking, okay, well, then can you flank? Can you drive around and shoot at your opponent's rear or their side armor, their weaker armor? Yes, you can. There are flank cards in the game that will allow you to take your flank token, put it in front of an enemy tank, and effectively, it signifies that you've driven around in such a way that you're pointing at their weaker side. The neat thing is they can do it to you. So two flanks, uh, two tanks, two flanks, two tanks can actually flank each other. And that's to kind of signify a set of tanks, each with their turrets pointed at each other's side. Right here below the range box, you see this little target icon. And this is to signify that you've spotted the enemy. So you will have tokens each tank will be numbered for our gameplay this is tank one and this is tank two just for simplicity's sake so if tank one here excuse me my kids have given me a, a chest cold and it's starting to kick in so if i sound a little choked up but uh, i'm trying to get as many videos recorded before it kicks in fully all right so if tank one here spots tank two for a multitude of different reasons it can be they fired they moved whatever it is you took a spotting action, you will mark it down in your spotting box that you've seen that tank. That's going to work the same way if there's multiple tanks on each side, that you'll have those counters there signifying that. You can get bonuses, which is called acquiring, which enables you to hit them easier. But if you acquire a target, you can only have one target acquired. So you can't have more than one tank spotted if you've acquired one of the targets. So if you're getting bonuses against one, you're not able to see any of the others. It's basically like you've got tunnel vision and you're just focused in on that one guy. Like I said, certain actions in the game will automatically cause you to become spotted. Things like moving, firing, those are, you know, you're streaming across the battlefield. The enemy is going to see you automatically. There are some things you can do to mitigate that. Sometimes you can conceal yourself, which will cause all enemies to lose their spotted token when it comes to actually seeing your tank. Here at the center of our little player boards, this is just obviously a symbol of your tank, but you have a token denoting each one of the positions that are in the tank. We see in our T-34, there's only four. We have five actually here in our uh, Panzer IV in the fact that he's got a loader, a gunner, assistant driver, driver, and a commander, we only have a driver, assistant driver, commander, and loader over in the T-34. The thing of it is, is let's say our driver here gets killed, right? You see how it says K uh, KIA and e uh, oh, all the boxes. So if he gets taken out, your move level gets dropped down to nothing because you don't have anyone driving the tank. 
But as an action, you can move someone else over and they can take over that position and start performing that function, at which point you'll actually start being able to drive again. I think that's kind of neat how that works out. Like I said, your commanders are your most important positions. The commanders are either going to have a E, an S, or a, what's the, an E, an S, or a G on them. So it's elite, seasoned, or green, basically low, medium, and high. You get some penalties if you're green, seasoned is basically neutral, and then elite is better. Over here to the right, this is your firing chart for all the different ranges. So it'll list down all the way from zero, being right on top of the tank, all the way down to 2,000, uh, farthest away you possibly can be. Your to hit chance, your penetration at that value, because it is possible to hit but not penetrate your opponent. Any bonus you get for firing APCR. Real neat system, like I said, the higher the number, the better. So you see up here at zero, our to hit chance at, or to hit number is 98. All has to do with drawing our cards here. You're looking at the battle number. After you do all your modifiers for range, penalties, anything else that um, affects it, if you are equal to or under the number, then you've hit the opponent. And that's when you're going to compare your penetration at that range to their armor, which is below down here. And depending on the amount of cards that you play, you either get to pick what part of the enemy tank you're firing at, or it's randomly decided, just depending if you play one or two uh, fire cards. Again, neat way that they do it. It's all abstracted. Uh, you can hit the track, hull, or turret, and then it shows you your armor value. Tracks only have an armor value of one, so they're very likely to get penetrated. Our Panzer IV here has a 7 on the hull, 6 on the turret as the front, but on the side we've got a 3 and a 4. Our T-34 over here has better armor though. At its front, it's 9 and 9 for turret and hull, and 6 and 7 from the side. So its side armor is pretty much equivalent to this Panzer IV's front armor. I didn't think it was that good. I mean, I know the T-34 was pretty you know, shit hot when it first came out because it had sloped armor and the Germans didn't use a whole lot of sloped armor, but I didn't think the Panzer IV was that weak compared to it. Eh. Oh, well, you guys put it down in the comments. Let me know. All right, so we're close to done with our quick little over through, uh, overview here real quick. Like I said, we'll be picking up on uh, the second video with the playthrough showing how the Roboto is going to work and how the game plays. Real short version here before we get to that. You have a large deck here, 100 some cards that you're going to draw from. The player will draw a hand of cards, the Roboto won't. Your hand of cards will be determined by the amount of tanks you have and then some other modifiers. You will play those cards, the move, the fire, the flank cards to abstractly move your tank around the battlefield into certain types of terrain, into advantageous firing positions on your opponent. The game plays out by how many times you play through the deck. There is a end game card, which will obviously signify the end of the game. There's a shuffle card that's already in the deck. I'm not going to dig that one out. But if you, a standard game, for example, is three decks. So what you would do is you would have the shuffle card put into that deck. Once you hit it, the whole deck would be shuffled. You continue playing, shuffled again. And then on your third deck, you put in the game end instead of the shuffle card. Then when the game end card is drawn, obviously, you would end the game. You would determine who won by who had the most victory points. There are scenarios that have certain objectives like taking the hill, things like that. If you want a shorter game, obviously, you can play through one or two decks. If you want a longer game, you could play through four or five. Just depends on your preference, whatever you want to play. And that's the, that's the basic gist of the game. It really is kind of like a tank version of Fields of Fire in that the deck is going to run the game for you. Uh, Fields of Fire didn't have the deck timing the game, but you guys know what I mean. The deck controls everything. There's no dice. The game itself is abstracted. I will say this before we get into the actual playthrough itself. I do think the game is a little more complex than GMT rated it as. And this just might be one of my little pet peeves with them. I do believe they rate their games just a little bit under 
the complexity level. This one was rated as a four. I would put it maybe more as a six. Just It just depends. And again, you guys actually let me know down in the comments. It could just be me personally. I could just be having a more difficult time with this one than I usually do with war games. I don't know. Could be me. You guys let me know if you think it's a little bit uh, harder than I'm giving credit for or if I'm just a dumbass. I don't know. All right, but we'll pick up in part two. The big thing I want you guys to see is how the game plays itself, which you'll see the basic version from me on how I'm playing my tank, and then the Robota, which plays ungodly different from how a regular tank plays. So that's one of the key things I want you guys to see. Uh, kind of, it's, it's a new system, all right? This is a new solitaire system. It is based on cards. There's a set of cards that it is uh, operated off of. But I have not seen a solitaire system operate like this one does. And I'm still kind of in the middle on which way I'm going with it. But you guys will have to stay tuned for part two to find that out. All right, y'all take care. I'll catch you in the next one.